Hey everyone, it's the Dr. Jason West in the West Clinic program. And today we're going to be talking about natural treatments for sinus conditions and sinus problems. It's such a common problem, especially heading in the winter time. And I wanted to share with you some secrets, not only that you can do at home, some foods to eat that'll really help with sinuses, but also some advanced treatments. And again, it's just not me saying it. We've got hundreds of video testimonials up on our blog, the West Clinic online.com. You can just click on the blog. They're all free and everything to look at. And I'm so excited to share with you my book uh, right behind me. I'm going to just bring this up right here. It's the natural treatments for sinus problems. There it is. I'll get myself out of the way. It's something free that you can get on Dr. Jason West dot live. It's uh, literally everything that we're talking about. Um, put a lot of effort into this book. It's a resource for people, especially heading in to the wintertime problems and all of the stuff happening with your sinuses. And so we're going to jump right into that. Before we start, I just wanted to give a big shout out to my sponsor. My sponsor is Personalized OTC. What that means, it's Personalized Organs, Tissues, and Cells. And this is one of the products that I recommend. I've seen really good outcomes. It is a special type of of vitamin C. It's called liposomal vitamin C, where we take literally vitamin C powder, we mix it with the fat, it protects the cells, and it's just a big shout out for the best way to get vitamin C inside of your system. So without further ado, let's start talking about sinuses and what we can do about it, what makes them run, what are some of the herbs that help with that, what are the immune system things that we can deal with or that we, you can have access to at home. It's all about the sinus problems on the Dr. Jason West live program. Every Wednesday night, we're coming at you with a new topic. It's a free masterclass. Not only do we have this awesome book, which I showed you uh, before about this, but we also have a download and resources. If you would like more information about the treatments that we're talking about, the at-home therapies, why vitamin A is so good for uh, protecting your mucous membranes, just head over there and you can get the book at drjasonwest.live. So let's jump right into sinus problems and let's talk about what we can do, especially at this time of year. You know, it's October, we're heading into flu season, we're heading into uh, cold season. So what can we do about it? Well, <clears throat> one of the things that we talk about all the time in my book, Chronic Hidden Secrets to Curing Your Chronic Disease, the real science solutions, stories of healing and hope is about balance. What we want to do is we want to get everybody balanced. Balanced people don't get sick. Balanced people don't get symptoms. So if we can put you back in balance, what happens is we get really, really good outcomes. So this is an example of running sinusitis. A lot of people that have post-nasal drip and they're just constantly being bombarded either by a allergy or an environmental exposure, or we're talking about, you know, a viral conditions can cause this. And, and basically it's your body's way of trying to shed viruses or, or to turn on your immune system. And so when I like to talk about sinus sinus problems, what happens is according to the Merck manual, which is kind of like the Bible dictionary, Sinusitis can be caused by staph, a strep, or pneumococcal, and therefore the treatment for those may include antibiotics, but not all the time. And this is something that I see frequently with people that are having healthcare conditions and they get hammered with antibiotic therapy. If we're not getting the immune system to work, what happens is that we just get prescribed over and over and over sinusitis problems. And the problem with that is with antibiotics, I absolutely believe there's a place for them. I'm not anti-medicine. I do think they get overprescribed. And what the antibiotics are designed to do is to kill bugs. Well, guess what? We're just a bigger bug. And so it's really hard on us, really hard on stomach. It can trigger some autoimmune diseases, obviously not intentionally, but you have to remember when your nose runs, what happens is you can get a bacteria. It can be bacterial related. It can be viral related. It can be inflammation from chemicals and solvents and, and stuff in, inside of your environment. And then of course 
the allergic component. And so if you can help the body to be healthy, what happens is you become healthy. And so looking at some of the medical treatments for chronic sinusitis problems, we have antibiotics, you have antihistamines that you know are knocking down the inflammatory component, decongestions, which is really kind of the steroid pathway. In advanced cases, you can uh, require a surgical I intervention. But what I like to do is to advise people this, be careful with the antibiotics. There's nothing wrong with, you know, for an acute infection, specifically that we know is bacteria related, but antibiotics have no biologic effect on viral infections. Prolonged antibiotic therapy can create some secondary problems that may be more difficult to treat. Something called aspergillosis over the upper respiratory tract. Antihistamines can cause drowsiness. Decongestants can cause dryness. And so what we really want to do is to get the body to be healthy. Balanced people don't get sick. Balanced people don't have problems. And so let's put everything in harmony. So that goes back to something we talk about every single week. And what is it? We want to get enough water into the system. We want to get enough food into the system. We want to get enough immune system stimulation into the system. And when we do that and we put the body back in balance, we can have some really great outcomes. And so as part of the, what we call differential diagnosis, is it, do we have classic sinusitis problems? Is it viral sinusitis? Is it allergy? Can it be coming from a bad tooth? Which I'm not a dentist, I have no vested interest, but I can see a lot of things improve when we have really good oral health. So a plug out there to all the dentists that are fixing rotten and bad teeth. If you haven't had a dental workup, for a time period. I think it's really important to do that, and especially if you're having chronic sinusitis problems. What you should do is a 3D cone CT scan. It can see if there's a difference in bone tissues at the root, uh, the tips. If there is a, a bad tooth, you got to get it taken care of. And a lot of times when we have people that have chronic sinus problems, we'll make some really nice progress and then they get up to here and then they just kind of plateau. When people plateau with a sinus problem, almost invariably there's a, a tooth problem. Also, there can be a nerve memory problem. And I think this is so important to be aware of. Nerve memory occurs when the nervous system is like got a trigger in it and it's like a catch 22. It goes through and it just fires and fires and fires and fires because that's what the nervous system thinks is supposed to happen. Now, this happens all the time. We have a rodeo or rancher guy come in the office. They'll be out practicing roping. They'll get a rope caught around the finger. The cow takes off, and then they'll come in the office. And even though their finger's not attached, they'll say, my finger's killing me. That's because there's been a neural praxis type injury to the nerve. And what occurs is it's telling the nervous system, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. Or uh, this sometimes it can happen with gallbladder conditions, and we have what's called a phantom gallbladder condition, and means they take the gallbladder out, this disease organ, and then it still hurts. Um, sometimes it occurs after a shingles infection. The shingles will come out, it causes these little blisters or pustules, and then it goes away. And then uh, what happens is people still have pain. Well, that's called post-herpetic neuralgia. Well, this, guess what, you guys? The same thing can happen with sinuses. And when it does, there's a nerve back here underneath the skull. It's called the suboccipital triangle, the lesser occipital nerve or the greater occipital nerve. Sometimes those nerves get just stuck on on. And those nerves have a direct influence into the sinus system. And then what happens is if you can go and reset those by using that German therapy, I talk about it every single week called neural therapy, you can reset that and a lot of sinus problems go away. So I'm excited to tell people about sinus problems and sinus difficulties using the neural therapy reset. Okay, treatment considerations for chronic sinus problems. And again, you guys, this is all in my book that's available for download. It's just a simple, I think it's about 10 pages. It's just an ebook, you can get it for free. And the reason why I put the resource together is I just want people to know about the information. So it's natural treatments for sinus conditions. I'm gonna put uh, a link up here. Let me see if I can pull this up right here. 
and I'll just drop it in right here so that people can uh, get the link for free. Here it is right here. It's just www.drjasonwest. Whoa, I can't type today. Drjasonwest.live. And if you'll go there, you'll see um, what's, you'll see it in a second. I'll throw it up here, but you can just get the resource for free. Now, advanced treatments for sinus problems. Here we go. You can do some endonasal therapy, which is some cranial restructuring. I'm going to drop in a video inside of the live cast here shortly. I'm, I'm not, I'll actually, I'm just going to put it here at the end of the video. You can see this way to literally get the sinuses to gap and come back together. It's such a neat way to biomechanically open up chronic sinus problems. There's the neural therapy where you can work on the lesser or greater occipital uh, nerve. I've seen some good outcomes with chiropractic therapy, with, with acupuncture. There's a silver proteinate solution called Argerol. That's really good that you can put these, uh, literally take a Q-tip, put a little bit of cotton around it. Then you can saturate it with the silver proteinate solution. You can put it into the nose. And then what it does is it just seems to pull out infection. It's a treatment that my grandfather um, started practice in the 30s, taught my dad, and my dad taught me. They call it Argerol nose plug therapy. Then you can do this pulse diathermy treatment over the sinuses. Of course, I always love IV vitamin C, and there's a specific protocol for hydrogen peroxide therapy that I've seen get really good outcomes with sinuses. Okay, so at-home therapies. For people that are looking for something to do at home, here are some of the recommendations for this. And let me clean up this little, there we go, um, that little uh, uh, overlay. Okay, uh, the first couple things, I think hot things are really, really healthy. Hot things meaning peppers and onions and garlic, I think are really, really good. Um, there's a horseradish uh, at home protocol. There's a poultice that you can make out of horseradish, but basically anything that opens up the sinuses for everyone that doesn't suffer from a food allergy from the foods that I mentioned are considerations. And I don't have it listed here, but I think it's so important to talk about fenugreek. Now fenugreek is an herb that really helps to thin down the viscosity of the mucus really, really healthy. I've seen good, good outcomes with this. There's only one mild side effect. And the mild side effect is that it kind of have a tendency to you smell like pizza or oregano, but the, now the person taking it usually doesn't notice it, but, and it's not an offensive um, odor by any means, but it's really, really good. There's also something called immunity boost. Immunity boost helps to improve your immune system. There's a native American herb in there called Lomatium dissectum. I think it's really important to work on your lymph nodes. The way to use that is a combination of potassium and dilute hydrochloric acid. And then I like Echinacea compositum. Now what that is, is it's a specific type of Echinacea liquid extract that has all of the active components in Echinacea. A lot of times with the Echinacea on the market, um, sometimes people say, oh, it doesn't work because they're using the wrong component. The, there's the flower, there's the stem, there's the leaf, there's the root. And in herbal medicine, unfortunately, uh, manufacturers can take the inactive component and package it into a product and it, it doesn't always, isn't always effective. Echinacea composed them. I've seen really good outcomes over the last 21 years. Okay, this is where you can get your information. If you'd like to get a hold of our my free ebook, Natural Treatments for Sinus Conditions, you just head over to Dr. Jason West Live. Let me see if I can pull that up here. There's a little bit better. So it's just right here at the top. And you will get to this page right here. This page gives you the option to register for Dr. West Live, a Wednesday live stream where you can get the free ebook and resources. Um, also, there's an option if you'd like to participate in our Thursday program, we talk about patient success stories. So it's just not me saying things, it's actually people that are that are actually have experience and have really good outcomes. All of it's available over here on our website. And also I give you a good link if you're looking for resources. Now, I know I'm not the only available outlet on the internet, but these are the things that I use 
uh, for people that have chronic sinus problems. So there's a good high quality link. Let me just re like kind of run down what I think is really good for chronic sinus problems. The first thing I think is really good for sinus problems is vitamin A. What is vitamin A? What it does is it helps your immune system. It lubricates your mucous membranes. For myself, during this time of year, I like to be on about 10,000 IU units of vitamin A. I really like that dosage. I really like this immunity boost that's right behind me that has the Lomatium dissectum. That's the Native American immune system stimulator. So whether it's rhinovirus, rotavirus, I think there's some really good responses to Epstein-Barr virus. Um, I've seen some really good responses to herpes simplex one, which is the cold sore virus. And so those viruses that can trigger immune, um, problems inside of your sinuses, vitamin A lubricates the mucous membranes. The Lomatium is really good. Now getting myself out of the way here, the other ones that are really good. I like the lymphatic drainer called myosotis. I like echinacea and my number one favorite recommendation for sinus problems is the liposomal vitamin C. And this is from our sponsor, personalized organs, tissues, and cells. We take vitamin C powder, we mix it with a fat so that it combines everything together and you get a liquid vitamin C. It doesn't upset your mucous membranes. I just see absolutely phenomenal outcomes with that. So it's all encapsulated in the, in the free ebook that I put together that you can pick up. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about additional chronic immune problems, chronic infection uh, problems. And uh, here is the, let's see, the real quick overview. Yes, yeah, so you can get the book download, you can get the ebook and the special link for the medical nutritional therapies. So that's really our show tonight. Oh, before I forget, uh, I just want you to stay tuned for a special technique called endonasal therapy. That's what we're going to profile of how to help with sinus problems. You're going to meet one of our patients that really struggles with taste and smell. Boy, I wonder if that sounds familiar. And I'm going to show the video right after this. Remember, every Wednesday night, we have a special master class that we're getting ready for. And then Thursdays, we have a special patient testimonial link. So that is uh, our show, except for the endonasal therapy that I'm going to show in just a second. Hey, check this out. Hey guys, in just a minute, you're going to see a really neat treatment that we've been doing in the office for decades for allergies, for chronic sinusitis, for ringing in the ears, for anything associated with brain fog, hormone headaches. It's, it's really neat. Now in the comment line, I forgot to mention the video. If you'll type in brain, I'll send you the free report on this amazing technique we've been doing in the office. I'm bringing you a hundred years of healing. Check this out. Dr. West, I'm just editing our new video, which is on something called endonasal technique, which is a way that you can gently adjust the cranial structures. And I walked coming down the hall and Christine's like, Hey, you got to talk to Morgana. You won't believe what happened. And so Morgana, this is today is your second visit. Mm -hmm. And she came here not feeling good. I'm not going to go into that, but she had something that I'm like, Hey, let's reset your nervous system by doing this cranial adjustment. And we're going to tell everybody what happened. Uh, so normally I have such bad tinnitus in my ears that I can't even sit in a room by myself without really kind of losing my mind because it's so loud. And within five minutes of getting the treatment, I didn't have it anymore at all. It's completely gone. And uh, what about this morning? Uh, this morning it, when I had the treatment or... Yeah, did you have any like ringing in the ears today? I did. Before the treatment, I was sitting in the waiting room and it was pretty bad. And before I couldn't even sit in a room by myself and now it's completely gone. So we have, this is for allergies, it's for taste, it's for headaches, and it's for ringing in the ears. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Morgana, thank you for doing this for me. Hey everyone, Dr. J on, and Nicole with the Daily Dose Vitamin H. Stories of patient hope and outcomes changing one life at a time. And we had a kind of unusual request, so Nicole came into the office, and then I want, she said, I want you to record the procedure so I can send it to my dad. So, Nicole, tell everybody what is wrong. Like, what were you suffering from? I have trouble with allergies, so then I end up with nasal polyps. And so, Dr. J here does this wonderful thing called a sinus adjustment or Indonesial, to where he goes up in and pops the polyps to where I can smell and taste for quite a while.
So um, she said, hey, I want to show it to my dad. He's having some sinus problems. And I want to tell everybody there's actually a really neat way to adjust the you know, cranial sutures of your head. It's something that my grandfather taught my dad. My dad taught me. It's not something that I learned in school. It's just one of those things where you learn and do things after being in practice for 101 years. And obviously, it wasn't me 101. It's our family has been in practice for 101 years. And so we do the endonasal where you literally take the sutures. There's a little tiny balloon. We'll show it to you in just a second. What it does is it gaps the sutures. It's really helpful for allergies. It helps with taste, helps with chronic headache problems. Um, it really helps people to breathe, and it's awesome. And, and uh, Nicole said, you got to do it for my dad, so we're going to do that. Anything to add? It also relieves the, side, the pressure on your ears. Yeah, really good for ears and earaches as well. So we'll get set up, and we'll add that, and, just, and you'll see it in just a second, and uh, we'll go from there. We're getting set up to do the endonasal. We do a, a blood pressure bulb, a sphygmomanometer. We hook it to a little bit of a finger cup. It's a little bit of a lotion on it. We take a blunt Q-tip, push it straight down into the nose, just a little bit, a couple um, pumps. And what it does is it makes those sutures gap, and it's just awesome for sinuses, for allergies, for ear problems, for taste, and for chronic hormonal headaches because this can affect the pituitary gland. We'll show you guys in just a second. a lot better if you do both sides just not one even though time most people say you know I don't breathe out of the right or I don't breathe out of the left if you do it both sides it works better so let's do the other side all right Nicole take a deep breath in open your mouth stick out your tongue so that's the endonasal adjustment it's been something that we've been doing in the office for about 70 years with really good outcomes and as weird and as funky as it looks, it's one of the most requested procedures that we do. And I love doing it because it really helps people to achieve and maintain optimal health. This is Dr. West and I'll see you guys on the next life-changing video. Okay, you guys, that is our program tonight on some ideas and considerations for sinus problems for headaches, for loss of taste, for ringing in the ears, you should really check out that endonasal therapy. Remember, we have a free master class every Wednesday at six o'clock, and I'm excited to share with you the insights and everything that we can for different chronic healthcare conditions. Thursday night at six o'clock, we always bring in a patient video. We're talking about vestibular migraines tomorrow night at six o'clock. This is Dr. Jason.